Hello, my name's Philip, and I'm from the north of England, uh, but don't hold that against me. Um, I now live in Canada, and I run a tourist attraction, which is a model railway show, where I entertain people, and they give me money, and um, I, I just have a great time, a bit of a whale of a time. Now, on my model railway, I have quite a lot of seat point motors. I bought them because they seem to be a good a deal and they would have the inbuilt switch and that, that could change the polarity of my uh, electro frogs. Now unfortunately um, I think there's a bit of a design fault, I don't want to be unkind to the people who make C point motors but I think there's a little bit of a design problem and I've got a little mock-up here to demonstrate. Now as you know if you use seat point motors they're a real pain to get set up underneath your model railway because you're you're in a difficult position physically trying to work upside down or whatever it is um, to, to position them. And if you don't posi position them exactly correct position, they don't work terribly well. Uh, the centre switch shorts or, or won't throw over. Now, the, I think intrinsically the problem is that the point motor wants to throw over about eight millimetres. But if you look at a point, you've only got about four or five millimetres. So as it goes over, the normally this rod uh, can't get across very far. So the contact switch can't throw right across in a very neat, pleasing way. And when you position this, as I said earlier, um, you're trying so hard to get it exactly in the right position. Now what I've done is I've set up this little jig and I put some wood between the point motor and the baseboard about an inch which means that the rod that comes with the seat motor is a little short by five six millimeters and what I've done is I've, I've taped with some insulation tape uh, an E string from a guitar and you can see it's popping up here just so you can see what I've used and it works beautifully. I was amazed how easy this was. So I'll flick the point motor over. You see, it works, and I've done it hundreds of times, very fast, to see if it's reliable. And when you look at the, the seat motor underneath, it's going right over, no problem with that sensor contact switch. I've also put a little bit of wire around it here just to hold it very tight because that's the sort of I think the weak point in the design um, if the if there's any play between the rod and the guitar string then the point will throw over so it, it has to be very secure to the between the rod and the guitar string uh, some super glue might help or some other sort of way of, of fixing it this was just a quick mock-up it only took about 20 minutes to set up and it's working beautifully. Obviously it cut this off. Uh, another thing that would help possibly, well, slots rather than holes for the screws so you can move the point motor around. But I found that with this, I could be very careless where I place the point motor. It can be two or three millimeters either way. It's not a big deal anymore because of the flexibility that the uh, guitar E string gives me. So I'll just flick it over a few times, you can see how well it's working. I'm doing it nice and fast and firm as the electricity would do. It works beautifully. I am so pleased with it. So that's that. Now while I've got your attention, I've got a couple of other things to say. Um, when you clean your track and you clean your wheels of your engines, they can look perfectly clean, but as many of you will know, you've got an oxide buildup, which is invisible, but your trains don't run quite as well as they should. Now, I discovered this recently. It's called Deoxit. It's made for guitar strings and audio connections, wherever metal is rubbing against metal and you want an electrical contact. So it's ideal for between rails and wheels because you've got your moving wheel on your metal rail. What you do is you, you put a little bit of this on your wheels and on your rails 
and then you get a black gunge which you have to wipe off and that's the oxide and then you can do it once or twice more until all this black stuff has gone and then you leave this on the rails and it's a very thin coating which you can't see and apparently if you scratch the coating it will it'll heal it'll it'll run into the scratch and and keep that continuity I saw an American with his American Model Railway on YouTube and he was swearing by this. He was saying that he's been in metal for uh, 30 odd years and he knows all about chemical reactions and all the rest of it and he, he, he couldn't praise this enough and I have been very impressed as well. So there it is. And while I've got your attention for a few more seconds, the last thing I want to say is simply listen to what Tommy Robinson has to say not what they say about Tommy Robinson. God bless.